but I wanted to be able to have a forum in which we can really probe some of the details and 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 have a deeper conversation about what it means and how it works. Mm. And and for me in particular, that that means kind of probing on those on on the decision making and the conflict resolution, because that to me is the curriculum. Mm. Some people th- say curriculum and they only mean, you know, books and directed academic activity. And it's like, I think that's not an adequate notion of curriculum. I don't think it even describes what what regular schools do. I don't think it describes that yeah. well. Is they're, they're also an immersive experience. It's just they're an immersive experience in something so different that that it has different consequences. <laughs> and, I, and I think that understanding curriculum as a social structure as much, at least mm-hmm. as much, if not more than whatever arbitrary things you happen to make other people do or have other people do in the process of it. Um, to me, that's really important is, is saying, you know, Cody doesn't tell Pepper what to do, <laughs> you know, and, and Cody might go to Pepper for uh, some expertise that Pepper has and Pepper won't tell Cody what to do, except within the context of, Oh, you're the expert. Help me out here. <laughs> you know, and, and that can go either way in, 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 in life. And it's only in a certain kind of school that that it that the adult is the only recognized authority and kids aren't. Yeah. So so that's where I think it's really important to acknowledge that that what what you've what the school has created is a structure. Some people say mm-hmm. these schools mm-hmm. aren't structured, and I disagree vehemently. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is structured, it's structured in a very specific way. But it's structured for autonomy and and for a, a form of equality that recognizes some people are experts in things and should be recognized for that expertise. But everyone has a certain equality in terms of just how we're going to relate to each other and make rules and solve conflicts and, th- and you know those being the central things. So yeah, yeah. In many ways, the the structure is the actual curriculum, right, um, exactly. and so. Yeah, I'll I'll offer a critique of public school and then a critique of one of our structures. Mm-hmm. I I actually like to sort of ask like what are what are people actually learning from this? So mm-hmm. if if you look at a public school, I think uh, the thing that people are really learning that tends to stick with you for a lifetime is to follow instructions, to mm-hmm. subjugate your own interests and desires, mm-hmm. and and to just expect that to be how your life is. Right. Right. And my, my, so I would have a, a bit of a critique of our judicial system. I think Mm -hmm. it, um, in many ways is very successful, but I think for many people, it can sometimes become the default if there is ever any sort of conflict or disagreement. Mm -hmm. Pepper mentioned there is a lot of informal sort of working things out and that's true, but I, I do see some people for whom going to the JC, the judicial committee is the default. And so what Mm -hmm. I, 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 look at that and i think okay well what are these people learning if you're if Mm -hmm. that's the way the system Mm -hmm. is being used and i would say in that in that case what you're learning is that if you have a problem you take it to a third party arbiter Mm -hmm. and and have them resolve it for you right but in my adult life uh, that's that's (laughs) not a system that's available to me and it's it's one i wouldn't choose to use if it was yeah you don't take your neighbor to court because you (laughs) wish they were more quiet right right Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's one of the things that, well, in particular, because I have so much experience with the village free school is that they've actually had a judicial committee for many years, but uh, somewhere around 10, 10 years ago or so, they had a financial crisis and had to change campus and they moved into a very small campus and, and dropped the formality and, and, you know, having moved a few times and expanded again, they did, I, I found out, picked it up again for about a year recently, but it lasted about a year and then went away. But but part of what they recognized was that, you know, they had a context in which they couldn't let things wait. And then and then sort of because they'd been together for a lot, you know, the, the staff had been together for a long time and a lot of kids were in there for long term. They just basically, as an organization, seems to have built up enough skill in informal resolution that that, that sort of. Uh, is more more what defines how they operate now, um, but they are also very clear that that they're not tied to however they're doing it now. They it can change tomorrow. 
if they don't think it's working. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's, I think it is important to look at what are the kids, and, and that's part of what they were realizing is, you know, if this isn't working, uh, you know, what we don't want is just to have things fester or, or not work. Um, yeah. It, so, yeah. It's, yeah, that's democracy in action. I, yeah. I, um, I have a feeling that for communities of, of self-determined people, schools like ours, in order for the group and for the organization to thrive, it sort of has to be self-renewing and mm -hmm. continually reflecting what works best for the people who are there. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, yeah, I think continuing to use a system that was adopted by students of previous generations just because it's the way that it's always been done is actually not not really effective. You can end mm -hmm. up sort of playing this game of telephone where you're, <laughs> you're, you're doing an imitation of an imitation of an imitation. Mm. Of, of the thing that worked for other people yeah yeah, yeah. right on. So, yeah that ability to choose what works best for the group I, that's inherent to democracy and and to self-determination and i think right. it makes places like this vital when that's happening mm -hmm. this is the agentic schools vodcast where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.